Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and to beautiful Wales, a country which you'll absolutely adore if you love sheep, gorgeous beaches and a terrible rugby team. Now, normally at this point in the video, there would be sort of a car standing next to me and that would be what I'm introducing for the video. But by that very fact that there isn't a car anywhere around me on this abandoned airfield, it's actually an abandoned airfield from World War II where we're staying, you can probably guess which car it was that I did bring initially on this trip. It was, of course, my Range Rover. Now, I'll explain a little bit as to why the Range Rover isn't here right now, and it will become quite apparent quite quickly why I've done what I've done in this video as we go through it. But essentially, the Range Rover isn't here, it's broken, you've probably guessed, again. And so, I needed to get back to London today, and this was yesterday I found out that the Range Rover wasn't going to be coming with me. I needed to get back to London. We're in the middle of nowhere in Pembrokeshire here in Wales. There's not enough cars with the other members of our party here to get us, me and my girlfriend and all of our stuff home. There's no rental cars, there's no public transport, there's no airport even where you could even charter a helicopter to get home. And so it really left me with one option, which was to buy a car. So that's what I've done. So let me show you the new car and explain a little bit as to why I'm not driving my Range Rover home and why I'll need to come back in a couple of weeks time to Pembrokeshire to pick up the Range Rover. It's been hugely disappointing actually, let me just say, because as I mentioned, we're on this abandoned airfield and there's plenty of off-roading opportunities around me. And that was mainly the reason for bringing the Range Rover on this trip. It was going to be the first road trip with the Range Rover, doing some off-roading and loads of fun Range Rover stuff. But it all went wrong. So um, a big shame, but there's been a turn in the tides because something quite funny has happened. And as you can see from the title, I bought a 1,000 pound Mercedes. I was hoping, well, I, I ideally need to go back tomorrow. Right, okay. Um, and, and pretty early on. So, I mean, were you hoping to be home uh, to deal with the sale? No, that doesn't matter. Um, I've got somebody, uh, I've got somebody at the house, but I've got someone who could go out to um, sort it out for you, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, the, the, the most ideal time I could pick the car up would be this evening. Um, but right. I don't know if that would be possible at all. I could work it with somebody to do that, yeah. Yeah. I need to give them a call and see if they could go over and handle this for us, yeah? Yeah, no problem at all. Right, so if you haven't worked out, I'm on the phone about this, which is a very, very red Mercedes CLK from 1999. It's a 3.2 Cabriolet automatic gearbox, which I'm fond of. And well, it might just work out to be the cheapest way for us to get back to London with everything that's going on. So I'll wait for a call back and hopefully we can go and buy it tonight. I mean, it's a bit of a risky one because there's not gonna be much time to test drive it, this, that and the other. And it'll be a very much blind purchase. So I mean, the worst possible thing that could happen is I buy this and then it breaks down. Um, and then, well, that doesn't bear thinking about, does it? But fingers crossed, she seems nice. I don't think she's trying to pull the wool over my eyes. So, um, yeah, I'll stand up here with my internet and wait for the call back. So before I show you the car properly, I thought, because basically we bought this blind. I saw this last night when I first got the idea to go and buy a car. It was the closest car to us, actually one of the only ones for sale within a reasonable distance. And by the time we actually went to see it and buy it, it was dark, very bad idea when buying a car, but here we are. We did manage to drive it about an hour back from where we bought it yesterday and it all seemed good. It was pulling a little bit left, pumped up the tires and that seems to have fixed it mostly. But what's quite funny is that I've noticed this morning there's various bits and bobs in the car. So we should probably see what we've, it's like, it's like storage hunters. You sort of just picked a car and there's random stuff in there. So let's see if there's any feces or drugs or anything like that in this car so ah so as you can see it's sort of a gray interior inside a little bit dirty on the seats but i guess this is a 1999 car so it's what you expect it's a cabriolet but we have two seats in the back and first find of the day a couple of 
empty Lucasade bottles. There's a massive M&S bag in here with a Tom Tom. Hmm, that's gonna be worth some money, hasn't it? And these are actually quite nice bags, you know. These are like those ones that are like 10 pounds from the supermarkets. Well, that's a good find. There's a couple of these. No idea what these are. Uh, they're like bean bags, but not really sure what they're for. And a steering wheel cover, which I took off immediately when we drove the car home yesterday because I hate these things with a passion. I guess you can see why though, because if you take a look at the steering wheel, it's pretty manky. Maybe I should take this car down to I Valley UK for a full sort of detail and interior cleanup. I think this car would actually come out quite nicely, or we'll see anyway. Um, glove box, well, I did have a quick look in here because we've got the original service booklet along with all the manuals, which is a very nice touch. That's about all the paperwork that came with the car. Obviously, not what you want really for something that's 22 years old, but beggars can't be choosers, I suppose. And within this nice little wooden compartment, there's this thing and some wooden sticks. Not quite sure what they're for, I guess. Hmm, we'll leave them there. That's actually more or less the extent of what we've got. There's actually some um, scientific goggles in here, so God knows what they were using this before they sold it, but they're there for whatever reason. And some hand sanitizer, which we're definitely, definitely gonna need after touching anything in this thing. Let's just move around to the back then quickly, see if there's anything in the boot. Um, uh, nothing on top, but there's a cool sort of under compartment here. And actually, a way you can just clip it in like that. And we've got a box full of random things. Some LED headlights, apparently. Looks like we've got some of the old original tools in there, which is a nice touch. And another shopping bag. So actually, nothing too interesting, unfortunately. Don't think we've hit the jackpot in terms of what's been left in the car. That Tom Tom, though, could be worth something, couldn't it? Anyway, what we'll do now is get the car into a little bit more of an open area. I'm going to check the levels. Actually, let's just have a quick look under the bonnet. Why not? This is a CLK 320, which... Oh, I don't know how you pop the bonnet. Hmm. How do you pop the bonnet on this thing? I have no idea. Ah. There we go. It's a CLK320, which means it has an almighty 3.2 litre V6. And I have to say, it looks pretty clean. Uh, obviously, we're just looking at the engine cover here, but everything seems to be in the right place, which is fantastic. I looked under here uh, to check for any sort of gunk or anything that looks like old chewing gum or a certain male fluid. If you see that, you don't wanna buy the car, but it all looks pretty clean. I need to check the oil level before we set off on our 300 mile journey today. Brake fluid, that's gonna be very important to check for a specific reason that I haven't explained just yet. Coolant looks good. We've got some windscreen washer. And actually I noticed quite interestingly, I don't like this, but there's only one windscreen wiper on this thing. So it just goes across like a bus. So yeah, this is the beautiful red Mercedes, which we're hopefully gonna be getting back to the London area today without a hitch. But, uh, well, I think I'm quite happy with it initially. So the only other thing I neglected to think about really is the fact that when we came here, cause we came here in my Range Rover, we filled the Range Rover up with all of our stuff of which, as you can see a bit of, there's quite a lot. And now we've bought this Cabriolet CLK. It's gonna be interesting to see how and if we can get everything in it. Got a fair bit of room on the back seats, but also the boot is quite small. So this could be interesting. Uh. Try and see how much we can get in the back of here. Uh, 
Ага. Ага. And the good news is we've just about managed to get everything in the car. Uh, there's a surprising amount of room in the back there. I don't think we'll be able to put the roof back because if you look at the boot situation, the roof falls into here and there'd just be nowhere for it to go. But actually very impressed with us to get it all in considering we filmed So just done a quick check, we've got brake fluid, which is good. Coolant is uh, almost at the top, so that's fantastic. Got about half a dipstick of oil, so that should be fine for today. And some windscreen washer too, which is all good. Right, well, here's the car in all of its glory. It's a T-Reg CLK320 Cabriolet from 1999 in a sort of deep, almost, was it burgundy red, I suppose? There is a name for it, but I can't remember. And I don't really know. It's on 18 inch AMG alloys, and that's about all I know. 3.2 litre V6, 220 odd horsepower, something like that. It does pull quite nicely, to be fair. But obviously, that's not the reason I bought the car. I didn't buy this car because I, I wanted it. We literally just need to get home today. So I genuinely paid exactly £1,000 for this car. So it is literally buying a £1,000 car to drive back to England today. So fingers crossed, all goes well. The engine seems to be running okay. The battery had a little bit of trouble, or the engine had a little bit of trouble starting yesterday because the battery was very dead, but I think it just hadn't been used for a little while. Paintwork, obviously, cosmetically, it's just not great, but maybe we'll take this to iValley before I get rid of it, because the plan will be to get rid of this pretty soon, I think. I, d I just don't need four cars, which I've got right now. And it seems pretty quiet inside, no rattles, no knocks, a little bit of a pull to the left and I think a bit of a slow puncture on the front left tyre. But we've got a way of pumping up tyres today so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. And yeah, I'm quite happy with it. We've literally gone 500 metres, so maybe later on in the day I'll tell you if I'm still happy with it. But like I say, if this gets us home today, I'll be very, very happy indeed. And I think the mission will be a success. So without further ado, let's jump in the car and get it going and head back towards London. Right, so we're here in the CLK on our way, just leaving the lovely sort of seaside, sleepy village of Dale where we've just had a bit of lunch and I've insured and taxed the car for the week. So we're all good. Well, you can't tax the car for a week, you have to pay for the whole month. But we're all good and we are finally on the way. We've got to stop off about an hour and a half away on our journey home today. So that'll be a great indicator of if the car's gonna make it or not, which really is all I care about. But I realise I haven't really explained too much about what went on with the Range Rover. In short, essentially, the brake lines completely failed. The rear right one was actually the one that completely split open. And the rear left was also pretty much at that stage anyway. So it went in to have that uh, sorted because essentially I lost all braking. It was very, very scary. I had to rush to get some brake fluid because I suspected that was the issue. Top that up, managed to limp it home and then to the garage with that method. However, obviously it was something that I couldn't drive the car home with. And so it went into the garage on Wednesday. Today is Saturday, the day that we're leaving and it was supposed to be finished yesterday. However, the brake line part arrived yesterday morning and it was the incorrect part. So. Unfortunately, it means they're not getting the part till Monday. The garage isn't open here on a Saturday. So the part doesn't arrive till Monday, which left me in this predicament. Anyway, there's a short clip of me driving the Range Rover when we had this issue. So take a look at that. Okay, so this road trip hasn't exactly gone to plan so far. The car has had a big problem. What a surprise. I was genuinely very confident going into this trip that it would be completely pain-free with this car. However, 
on literally the drive over here, there was some horrible, horrible wheel wobble on the motorway and above sort of 60 miles per hour. And today, uh, the brakes stopped working. And once parked up, we noticed a nice big puddle under the rear white, white rear right wheel. And uh, brake fluid loss, there's obviously something's gone wrong there. And lo and behold, the brake fluid warning came on and every other warning light under the sun. And so, we've limped it over to a Halfords, bought some DOP4 brake fluid, which is what this car takes, topped it up, and I've called a garage to come and have a look at the car tomorrow morning, where I'm gonna take it over to their Land Rover specialist, which is luckily only about 12 miles away. However, I have to say, right now, at least, there is some brake feel left. But, earlier on, the pedal would just go straight to the floor with no pressure whatsoever. So I think topping the brake fluid up tonight and tomorrow will get me over to the garage where hopefully we can get it fixed. But I thought I wasn't going to see another garage for at least a few months with this car and I could just enjoy it. Also, I don't know if you can hear it's all picking up on this camera, but there's various knocks coming from under the car, which I thought was suspension but it must be something else because all the control arms have just been replaced and the ball joints. And on the drive over here the other day, they had gone those knocks, but now they're back. And to top it all off, the car now won't go out of second gear. So I'm a little bit off, as you can probably see from my face, which is a shame, a real shame, because I wanted to make a video that was entirely positive and happy about this Range Rover because I have been looking so forward to taking it on its first road trip and just enjoying the car. I've not felt like I've been able to do that in the five or six months that I've owned it. And yeah, I've enjoyed it the past few days around these country roads under 60 miles an hour where I haven't noticed the wheel wobble. But then the suspension knocks came back yesterday as you can hear now, literally all the time gearbox is playing games and obviously I have no brakes. So it's going into a garage tomorrow potentially, well at least for the whole day and uh, yeah it's not exactly the video I wanted to make with this car. Nonetheless, fingers crossed I can get everything looked at tomorrow, hopefully get it sorted and in the last few days of this trip we can enjoy the car. But uh, I'm actually at the point where I'm I love this car, but is, is it worth owning it? And in response to one of the last videos uh, with this car where lots of stuff got repaired, people said, well, you know, you've you spent so much on the car repairing it, you should have just bought a better one. But I do wonder where, if I spent seven or 8,000 pounds on a much nicer example, am I just gonna encounter some of these similar issues again? Because they are common problems. I would imagine this brake line issue is probably rust. So if I bought a slightly newer one in a few years time, I'm probably gonna have the same issue. I don't know. But all I do know is I'm not a happy bunny right now. And that's a real shame because I like to be a happy bunny. And I just wanna enjoy this car because I love it so much and I think it's great. But it's doing everything in its power to try and sabotage that right now. Anyway, you'll see me again next time. Hopefully it's a bit more positive about everything providing that we can get stuff fixed fairly pain-free tomorrow. But yeah, I'm just gonna enjoy second gear for the rest of this drive, because that's all I've got. But so far, all I can say is I'm enjoying driving this at the slow speeds that we are. I'm apprehensive to get this up to motorway speed to see, well, if we notice any other issues with it when we're going a bit faster. But for now, at least at around 30 miles an hour, it's very quiet. Gearbox is smooth, the engine is smooth. The air conditioning, I think it's working. I'm not really too sure, but it's not too hot in here anyway. We've got this weird parking brake thing on these old Mercedes where I've got a big pedal up here on the left-hand side where I have to literally extend my leg like that to get to, and that's the parking brake, so that's quite quirky. Also, an electric button here, which moves the rear headrest up and down. I love that. We've got that, but we don't have heated seats. So I think I'd rather the heated seats, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. 
We do also have cruise control and a speed limiter in this car, which is perfect for today as we're going to be covering about 270 miles largely on motorways, or at least hopefully we're going to be covering 270 miles. We may end up at the side of one of them, but let's just hope that's not going to happen. So, nursing the car out of these windy parts of Wales now, we'll find some more major roads. He, wow, didn't want to move over, did he? Get this on some more major roads and see, hopefully, that everything is still fine. But, so far, so good. Wish us luck. Right, time to put some fuel in the Mercedes. I have no idea how big the tank is, but apparently it will get about 27 miles per gallon. So I think if we fill it up, 266 miles, we should definitely get home on it. I'd imagine it's about a 50 or 60 litre tank, but we'll, we'll see, won't we? I'm gonna put super unleaded in because I don't know if this will take E10 fuel, so we'll just be safe. Okay, well it stopped at 52.5 litres and there was just under a quarter of a tank, so I think the tank is probably about 60, 65 litres, something like that. So based on 27 miles per gallon, that's around uh, 14, 15 gallons. We should easily get about 400, 450 miles out of the tank, so happy days. Let's just check that that's full. There we go, full tank. Lovely stuff. Now, will it start? Ha <laughs> ha! Excellent. Let's go. Well then, I thought I would give you all a little bit of an update as we are now at motorway speed. And I'm pleased to say that the car is holding its own. We're doing 70 miles per hour now and there's no shakes, no wobbles. This car is really comfortable. The suspension's pretty soft, but these seats in particular, I've barely had to adjust it and it's just perfect actually proving to be a pretty comfortable cruiser and dare I say it I kind of like this car which isn't good because I do need to get rid of it because I now have four cars and that's just too many isn't it but hmm, I kind of like it also we've done about 70 miles since we filled up and the needle on the tank has only just gone below full so it seems to be relatively efficient as well We've got cruise control which is working perfectly, very easy to use and yeah, everything is good. We've got a sound system which is pretty good. I love the wood sort of on the dash there. Yeah, I'm actually quite enjoying it which is not what the plan was for this at all. But I think buying this thousand pound Mercedes and driving it across Wales, across most of England to the London area is actually going to be, and I don't wanna you know, touch, touch wood, I think it's going to be a relatively easy task. So yeah, nothing really bad to say at all. This is going so, so well. And I'm actually having a quite good time. Well, it's the next morning, and as you can see, I'm back in London with the Mercedes, reunited, of course, with my 7 Series and the Porsche, but obviously the Range Rover isn't here because it's still in Wales. So that'll be a whole other thing in a week's time where I have to go and pick that up. I can't go this week, the car's actually done today, because tomorrow I'm heading off on holiday to Italy, lucky me. So next week, we'll probably be filming another video where we go and pick up the Range Rover, and finally, it should be sorted, although, I just feel like that's never gonna happen with that car. But anyway, this video's about this thousand pound Mercedes and it has got us back to London without a hitch. Dare I say it, as I mentioned earlier, 
I quite enjoyed the car. It's so, so smooth at motorway speeds, really, really quiet. The gearbox is lovely. And actually, I've not got a bad word to say about it. Yes, the bodywork needs some attention and there's a few bits and bobs and a couple of rattles that could have some work. However, for a grand and for the fact that we bought it so last minute in such, well, unadvantageous circumstances, I'm very, very happy indeed. The question is now, what do I do with it? I think it might be a nice idea to take this over to my friends at iValley UK to give it a full sort of detail and interior cleanup. Let me know if you would like to see that because otherwise I think I'll sell it. But having said that, is there anything else you think I should do with this car? And do you think I made the right call buying it? I'd love to know your thoughts, so do leave a comment below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, of course, if you haven't already, and subscribe if you're one of my 80% of viewers that have not done so. Anyway, thank you so, so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you all very, very soon.